guys, so welcome back to Real Auto Reports. As you know, we are in the 2015 Lexus GS 350 F Sport, and this is the all-wheel drive model, and we'll tell you more about the differences between the rear-wheel drive options and the all-wheel drive options in the GS 350. Now, we might have covered some of this in 2015, 13 model year when we first looked at this vehicle when it first hit the scene but this time we have the updated vehicle for 2015's model year and well with slightly over 900 miles on this vehicle it is very new in the press fleet here in Colorado so we want to make sure we cover all the details here for you in the next oh, 15 minutes or so everything I can think of to fit in and if you have more questions make sure you leave a comment on our Facebook page page or on the video itself right on the YouTube channel. So jumping into this vehicle, I mean the first thing you're going to notice about the GS is that it has, even in its base form, a more up-to-date design and a sportier flair than the ES model line that we've looked at recently here at Real Auto Reports. Now remember, the ES, the GS, you can get both of them in a hybrid format as well, and they will have different, uh, well, actually, generally, they will have the most powerful engine. I was going to say they would have different engines, but generally with the hybrid system, they'll have the most total system horsepower of any of the models in the family, and that is definitely true in the GS450H that you can get from the GS model family. But back to this 350 with the F Sport package. We have the 3.5 liter V6 engine in this 350, and that's going to be about 306 horsepower. You're going to see about 19 miles in the city, miles per gallon in the city, and about 21 combined, which is not bad for a luxury full mid to full size sedan with all the equipment that these vehicles typically have on it. Now we have the F Sport package which is right about a 46 4700 dollar option on the uh, on the Monroney sheet and that will add a whole bunch of pretty cool stuff if you want a sports sedan. So the F Sport I like to say is really more of a looks package, but I guess that's not really fair in the GS because in the GS you have an adaptive uh, and variable suspension that comes along with the F Sport. And so when you buy this car, you're going to notice that it is a little stiffer in its ride. It's going to be a little quicker in the handling. You're not going to notice the performance differences really because the GS F Sport and the GS 350 pretty much drive zero to 60 pretty much in a similar fashion. The biggest difference is going to be whether you have the rear wheel drive or the all wheel drive option. Now this vehicle we have here in the F Sport is the all wheel drive and in Colorado that comes in quite handy because it did actually snow while we had this car already in our testing. So from this real video perspective and in the climate that you live in, you're going to want to take a look at that option package and decide whether all-wheel drive is really something that would help you live with the car every day. Here in Colorado, I would tend to choose it even though you give up some cool options. And you say, well, what's that? So what that means is that you're going to be able to add the Lexus Dynamic Handling Package to it and the rear wheel steer. So. In the rear wheel drive, if you get the additional options, you actually can get several degrees of rear wheel pivoting along with your handling package in the F Sport, which makes the turn in really crisp. It makes the vehicle handle like a true sports sedan. And I think it's pretty cool technology. However, you give that up when you go to the all-wheel drive. So in this vehicle, we can't really speak to the way. We have driven the F-Sports with that packaging on it at different press events, but for this review, we're really talking about the all-wheel drive. Now, what's interesting about the, the difference between the rear-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive is that you also have a uh, you know you have a capability difference there and it's going to feel different in the way it drives when you drive the all-wheel drive and you turn tight into a parking space 
the Lexus all-wheel drive system is not quite as smooth as something like an Audi S4 or uh, even really the BMW X drive system. You are gonna, if you're really in tune to the car, you're gonna feel it kind of bind up a little bit as you're turning really tight. And it's nothing that I would ding the car for, it's just something that I notice when I turn tight in circles at Real Auto Ranch and when I come into parking spaces. But on the whole, most people probably wouldn't notice it. This vehicle with the F Sport package has a stiffer ride than some of the other cars out on the market because it is the sports tuned suspension and variable, as I mentioned. And you ask, well, how is it variable? Do you get to set things or, or what what happens with this vehicle? Well, you have this dial right here and you have eco mode, which is actually what I'm driving in right now. And then you have push to normal and then you can turn it to S if you turn to the right. The gauges will turn red. The S will come up on the right side of the upgraded screen, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. And then you're in sport mode. Now in S mode, you are not affecting the variable suspension yet. All it's doing is changing your throttle input mapping, your shift points, things like that. It's not really doing much to the car itself in terms of a steering and handling perspective. Because remember also in these GSs, and I hadn't mentioned it yet, but you have a variable steering setup as well. So it can um, tune itself to or driving so that's something that you want to keep in mind as well so when you then turn it to s again you go to s plus now s plus is where it's really at if you're trying to drive this car out at a track day an autocross event or through the twisties and even if you're up in the mountains or you're i don't know out on the you know the dragon out on the east coast this mode will make See, there you go. It's changing the shift points, and I'm not on the accelerator much harder than I was before. See, it's holding the gear at 3,500 RPM because it believes that that is what you want in S plus mode. And the other thing it's doing is it's changing the, the steering, it's changing the suspension. It's going to give you a totally different experience with the vehicle and it's going to be more engaging. It's going to be more dynamic. It's going to give you a flatter, curve through the or a flatter position through the curves when you go into a corner and see we're going to do that right here on the brakes on the gas and it's just really nice and flat and really controlled it is super easy to drive this car into a corner and the steering is nice and weighted up now that we've been driving it and it's going okay you're getting aggressive that's the cool part about Sport Plus mode, is it'll only really do this for you when you want it in this mode. You have blind spot monitoring, so when you get on the freeway here, you know where you are. You've got a great sound from the motor. Now, do remember that the F Sport has the basically the perspective of being a sports sedan with that rumble. You'll notice that in this vehicle with the stiffer suspension and the sports tires, and remember the exclusive 19 inch rims that come on the F Sport, you're gonna find that the road noise is a little bit louder in this car than it would be in the GS450H, at least in my opinion. I haven't put a sound meter on the two side to side, but I notice more road noise in these, and I think it's it's likely because of the liver suspension, the stiffer suspension, the stiffer bushings, the heavier duty and thicker stabilizer bars for the handling. So this is gonna be your sports car, and it's not super loud, but it's definitely not as quiet as the ES300H we just had here at Real Auto Reports not that long ago. Some, some updates though for 2015, you're probably wondering, what is changed since we talked about this car in 2013 model year? Well, the dashboard setup, they say that there's a new multimedia system in this car available and the screen is larger when you get the navigation. It's over 12 inches. You can see it's quite a big screen. It's actually what most of my passengers notice when they get in the car is that screen and the fact that it is, uh, well, quite large. And it is 
able to be segmented into several sections. So right now it's in navigation left and a third of it is over there on the consumption gauge showing our miles and our range. You can also use the little mousey thing. Now again, a lot of people don't like this mouse piece. I find that it is, um, it's a little tricky to get used to, especially if you're a passenger. It is, you have to be left hand centric or you have to reach across with your right hand. It's a quick joystick and I think that's what people notice the most about it, is that it is so quick that stuff, move, you can move it around the screen really quickly. And if you're watching the uh, you know screen here, what you'll notice is that I can get this little red dot that's flying around. Now, of course, the other thing that you're gonna notice in this vehicle is that it has the ability to go to three sections on the uh, screen here. So I have it in two. It is actually able to set to three. And that's kind of a cool feature if you're looking to get some very specific information. And if I go to the home menu here, you can see how far across it goes when it is one screen. And you've got all of your suite of apps, your Lexus app suite, the Inform, which has also seen an upgrade for 2015. The only other thing that's really changed for 2015 though, besides the multimedia and entertainment system and the Inform suite that you can get as part of the car is the 18 inch wheels are standard on all other GS models. Now remember we have exclusive 19 inch rims here in the F Sport. Now this vehicle here, the last one we saw was the bright, bright red color. And this one here, if I just quickly pop over here is Atomic Silver. And this actually, ironically, is the same color as the ES300H we saw. They also called that color Atomic Silver. So it's a popular and, uh, well, probably a more regular color in this lineup to keep you more stealth when you're driving your F-Sport. But what can you do, right? That is uh, just a personal preference on color. I kind of like the bright red that we had. And boy, you know, this car would look really cool in a lime green or a yellow, but it's probably not as fitting for the luxury segment. Some other things I'd like to talk about, the way it drives, you know, just talking about the way it drives. This variable steering is actually quite nice. And as I said, when you go to the Sport Plus mode, you can feel it changing the weight to fit the driving that you're doing. You have that variable suspension. And what's nice about the Sport suspension in this vehicle is that it's not overdone. You don't feel like you're riding on a buckboard inside the car. We, we, posted our video not that long ago of the WRX STI and my biggest complaint about that vehicle is just how rough it rides on a daily basis. This vehicle you can take downtown and sure you're going to notice the manholes and the potholes but it's not going to rattle your teeth. It's still going to give you that luxury ride, that kind of smooth quality that you're looking for out of the Lexus brand. Of course you have some nice detail in the vehicle but moreover in the F Sport you have a nice transmission feel you do have the manual mode which is a little bit different than the S sequential mode that you'll find in some of the other Lexus models you have your paddle shifters up here so it drives well now do notice that in the F Sport you still only have in 2015 a six-speed automatic transmission not an eight-speed or anything like that in the F Sport in the other models you're gonna find a different transmission setup but this one is the sports tuned and made it to the all-wheel drive now again we have the hump in this vehicle, which makes driving it a little interesting for people of my height, because I hit my my lower leg, kind of ankle area heel on that hump, just like in the IS, so it's not something that I'm thrilled about with the design from that perspective. From a fuel economy, I talked about 21 miles per gallon, 19 in the city, 26 out on the highway, not bad. And the noise really isn't bad for a sports-tuned four-door luxury sedan. It's a little louder than some of the other Lexus models, but definitely tolerable for what you get in the vehicle. A couple other things I want to mention in this detailed review. 
is the uh, power trunk open and close. That's a nice feature. That feature actually will run you, oh, right about $400 extra. And uh, that's not bad. It's, it's a nice feature to have. So you might want to look at it look at that if that's a cool thing you want to add. I like it because it does help with the key to open it and it opens all the way because the standard trunk is not counter levered the way that uh, it is on the 2013 Dodge Charger that we're still long term testing. And some of the other cars that we've looked at, I mentioned it in my reviews when they pop open all the way because I find that that's a nice usability feature daily. Lexus says that you can get four golf bags in the trunk of this vehicle, so you know you have good room in the GS350F Sport. Of course, you have your entertainment system, your dual climate control, and you have heated and cooled front seats in this vehicle. Now, the cool thing about that is that they have an auto feature, so they will turn on auto for you and turn up and down depending on the ambient temperature, which I like. So when you first get in the car, they'll, if it's really cold, they'll turn up all the way, and then they'll back themselves down slowly as the seat heats up. So you have that option to let the vehicle be intelligent for you. And that's kind of a cool thing in and of itself. Now, the other thing that I like about this vehicle is we have the F-Sport seats. So they are a multi-way seat with multiple lumbar settings. I like it. In fact, what is neat about this vehicle, when you have the away settings set so that when you get out, the wheel moves in and up and the seat moves back so you can get out. Rear passengers, watch out because when you do have rear passengers in the car and if you're letting the seat go all the way back, you can uh, kind of trap them back there and trap their feet. So you want to watch out for that. But what's cool about it is when you get in the car, it won't actually bring everything to you until you click the seat belt in. And I think that is pretty cool. And you'll feel the lumbar actually inflate behind you and the wheel will come down and towards you depending on how you have it set. So some neat features in this Lexus. It is a neat sport, well, yeah, sport is a good word. It's a sport luxury sedan and it's worth checking out. I like the car. I definitely would put it on my list of considerations if I was looking at this kind of sports sedan, this size category with the room that it has. So check it out. You may be a little bit disappointed with the rear seat room compared to other full-size sedans, but for what it's being compared to, I think you'll find it pretty usable and fairly comfortable. So we'll see you down the road and thank you for joining us. Okay.